Hey everyone and welcome to The Philip Show. So good to have you here. Today we're in an age, and I know you all know that you're watching me here. There's a lot of platforms that have people doing videos. There's a lot of talk about what is real when it comes to digital, what is not. There's a lot of media surrounding what happens when we assume that everything is airbrushed. And we set that, that as our ideal, right? We've heard it a lot. But also, what about the journeys of people who decided to make um, fitness their profession? And why did they decide to do it? What are the backstories that we see? We see the pictures, we see the videos, you know, but who is that person? Why did they decide to do that? And what has been their journey towards being so inspirational, towards being so helpful, towards being so competent in the realm that they're in? Well, today we have an awesome online trainer, CEO of Time to Shine, and he's going to give us a lot of perspective about the why of fitness, the how of maintaining that kind of standard, and where do people go when they need encouragement and they turn to fitness as a resource. So please help me welcome John. John, hey. How are we going? How are we doing? Sorry, how's it going? It's going. It's going. <laughs> we we going. are going well. <laughs> we going. We going. So how's everything going over in your world? So far, so good. Been up since four, uh, trying to get my morning routine in. So uh, that's what I do every day, just to kind of keep my headspace strong. And and before I, I communicate with anybody else, it's like let me just have my me time. So I've done that, and I'm here now. So I, I love the fact that you said that you do that in the morning because you know we see a lot of people, and, and let me just um, not pluralize it. I see a lot of things online that sound good, but I always wonder: do people actually do that? You know, you have the motivational <laughs> coaches, and they're like, "And before I wake up, I take some time." To, you know, so it's interesting. It is cool <laughs> that you're like, "Hey, I, I literally just did this." Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I actually do it, and honestly. Uh, it took me the longest time to, to truly like stick with my morning routine. Uh, but the thing is when I was falling off or anytime I have fallen off because everybody does that, um, I realized my mental state kind of just dwindles because it's, it's the time that I have for myself to just to collectively like start preparing for the day. Mm. Um, because, you know, I, and that's part of the reason why I tell people a morning routine is so important is because you don't know what you're going to face throughout the day. And if right. you are mentally preparing yourself, you know, I, I do affirm uh, affirmations, you know, remind myself what I'm grateful for every day and in my workouts, because it's, it's just like, I think that's what builds the resiliency in us. Um, and yeah, I, I really do. I follow it. <laughs> Some days, you know, might be harder than others, but yeah, I do. <laughs> when I was watching one of your videos uh, before this interview. And one of the things that you were talking about was consistency. Some people push, only until they see the results they want. And I think you use the term plateau. And then all of a sudden, they start to kind of decrease either their reps, their interest, their something. What about that do you either not recommend? What do you warn against? Because I, I stopped watching before I heard what you were going to say about why that's not good or how to guard against that. Yeah, I think the biggest thing, and it really goes in all aspects of life more so than just fitness, is that mm -hmm. a lot of times, it's, it's all mental, right? So when we hit a plateau, when we don't see progress, it's it, we're so easy to just kind of like fall back on on what we've been doing because we think, okay, that's as far as it's going to get me. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, it's just it's just trusting the journey because I think that uh, we look at the numbers on the scale, we 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 look in the mirror and we don't see it. When we're seeing ourselves every day, you're not going to see the change. Yeah. Um, and you know, over time, you might, and that's why I say take progress pictures because if you take a picture one day and then thirty days later you'll see a much bigger difference than looking at yourself in the mirror every day. So, um, yeah, the plateau, it's, it's, you know, sometimes, yeah, it means changing it up and means you might need to do something different in your routine, but also it doesn't mean that you're not progressing. Um, and I think that's the, the message I try to push is that, it, you know, you have to trust the journey. So, yeah. One of the things that, um, that I was talking about when we, um, when we opened the show was how, 
a lot of times we can see, like we can see you in working out, like, oh, he has a nice physique, or this is an attractive guy, very Instagram, very, you know, very that. But we don't really see the why behind it. You know, we don't really yeah. understand your purpose or your journey when it comes to how you decided that this is important to you. And you have a pretty dynamic, you know, you have a pretty dynamic story. How did you get started when it comes to saying, I really want to concentrate on me? Well, so uh, it all started when um, I'd say it was my senior year in high school. Mm -hmm. I was overweight. I was about 230 pounds. Um, really had, I, wasn't, I didn't play sports. You know, I had a job. I hung out with my family. I was just kind of a hermit. Um, but I was just unhappy with how I felt. I, I wasn't healthy at all. I was drinking Mountain Dew. I was, you know, like I'm, I grew up in an Asian family, so I'm eating rice all the time. So it's like you just see the weight like, packing on as I'm getting older. I'm like, okay, this isn't. This yeah, isn't like I was drinking right? Mountain Dew. I'm like, yeah, like I'm drinking Mountain Dew. I'm like, you're not gonna call out my dinner last night. That's what we're not gonna do. <laughs> but go ahead. And if you like, my, hey, listen, I love Mountain Dew. Trust me. I. <laughs> I don't know the last time I have them, but I, I just feel like if I did, I'd just go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> like, give yeah. me a whole pack of them and do it. I'll just drink them all uh, and yeah. not sleep for days. But <laughs> so, but my dad, I think he saw it in me. So he started like banging on my door. And, you know, it's five o'clock in the morning. He's like, get up. And at the time, I'm just sitting there thinking, okay, this is ridiculous. Like, I'm not going to be a morning person. Um, but that's when it started for me. And it, it was years of just the roller coaster ride going up and down, up and down. But the longer I stay with it each time, the more I, I feel the changes, you know, taking place, not just physically, but also mentally, too. Um, and so it just kind of stuck with me at one point or another, where it was just that this is what I need to do consistently to keep in that direction of feeling good and stop feeling sorry for myself. And uh, yeah, it, but it was it was a journey. And I think that that's why I got into this in itself for sharing my journey with others is because everybody has their story everybody has their challenges and it's so easy to quit but also at the same time um seeing somebody else's struggles and that and when somebody can relate to them i think that that encourages others to to not give up and that's and that's huge um for people who are kind of i, I don't want to use the word struggling but thinking things are a little bit too hard you know yeah. because by the time you say i give up you know, there's a whole thought process before that. And a lot of times, you know, it's just life in general and however that's been interpreted through throughout your entire life. You're pretty open about, you know, your life and the things that you've gone through um, to get where you are. A lot of what yeah. we see today from you it, and from a lot of people. So I don't want to put you in the Instagram, you know, physique box. You know, <laughs> but, but one of the things that we see, and I think a thing, a thing that um, attracts a lot of people is the confidence, right? The confidence that is exuded, the, um, yeah, the skill level, but yet seeing happy and inspiring and things like that. But your confidence kind of came with your story. You know, you had to build that. You were, um, yeah. I know that when you were young, you said you were overweight and that's great, but you had a hard time fitting into different circles as well. So there's a, like a psychology to it too. Yeah. When you were younger and you were trying to fit in, um, what was that like for you and how did you navigate to a place where it's just kind of like, how'd you find your way out, I guess, of that? Yeah, yeah, so growing up, I grew up in a, you know, somewhat rural area in Kentucky. Um, and so I was a minority, uh, was probably one of a very few families that were any you know, people of color. Um, and also when I was younger, I was a lot more, more feminine. So I hung, all my best friends were girls, you know, so okay. I was always placed in these different categories where it was, I was either dealing with racism or always being, you know, made fun of for being gay. This is long before I came out of the closet, long before I even knew what being gay was. Um, so literally since I was a child, I've faced this, this need to feel like I had to fit in and kind of set a higher standard for myself because I just felt like I was always being judged and I actually was, I didn't, but I didn't let it get to me. It was just something that I was using to empower like my being for who I was day to day, you know? And it was like, it's almost like a chameleon. And it's just like, you just, I just had to, you know, I remember changing what I wore. Uh, you know mm. the types of clothes i wore everything just because 
I was so focused on just trying to be involved and liked. Um, and that's, that's honestly, you know, I came out when I was 25 oh. and coming, coming out and, and really not really entering into like the community itself until, you know, early thirties. It was like that kind of like sparked that whole having to, the need to feel to fit in again. It was like, I, can I be myself? You know, can I be my authentic self? Because my entire life has been, no, you can't. So, mm. so how did you, so I, I guess the question is, <laughs> do you fit in now? <laughs> <laughs> I would say yes. I say okay. I, I, and the reason why I say yes is because no, it's no longer about the need to, to fit a certain mold for me. It's not Got that, it. It, you know, and I think that what happens when you do come to those terms in life, the right people gravitate towards you, the right opportunities gravitate towards you because you truly are just living the best version of you that you know you can be. And, yeah. you know, and you know, I like to focus on growth. I think that, you know, we, we grow every single day. Nobody stops growing. And um, yeah, so do I fit in? I think I do. And I think that anybody who does choose to live that way, they fit in however they want. So yeah, yeah. like you just fit in just being, you know, yeah, like it's just, you know, and I think that that's such a wonderful thing. Like people can have, you know, their goals and the strategies and you know what I attain to either look like, but when we get down to the why, that's where the health kind of comes in. I, I guess that would be more psychology as well, but that's where the healthy yeah. art comes in. It's like, yes, do all these things, but while we're doing that, you know, how do you see yourself? You know, how are you doing, I guess, internally? When you work with people now, you're an online, um, do you, you do online training or do you do in-person training as well? Online, just online. Just yeah. online. So when yeah. you're communicating with people online, how do you, take what they're saying and create a routine for them? So uh, the biggest factor, you know, the one thing about online training, because anybody can go Google the things you need to eat and the things you need to do to, to lose weight. Uh, the biggest factor as far as online goes is dialing in with your clients, my clients, and, and truly understanding where their headspace is, their mindset. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, me, myself, I've, I've I know the struggles I've faced, and um, I think it's important to gauge where each client is specifically in their journey, mm -hmm. because that's going to be the difference of, you know, what I need to speak to them each day and what I need to say to them each day. And, you know, because I'm, I'm all about encouraging messages and, and, you know, and just if somebody's having a hard time, like, talk to me so I can be the one, you know, I can, I'm in your corner. Yeah. And so it's more than just here's what you need to eat and here's what you need to do to get in the gym. It's like we're also going to focus on, OK, what are you struggling with? What's causing you anxiety? You know, what can you do to to overcome those different obstacles? Because they're, we face them day to day. And a lot of times it's just the accountability. It's just having somebody there that you can lean in with and, and kind of brush you know, certain things off your shoulders, but also work through them rather than just covering you know, these feelings and whatnot, because what's going to happen is that mindset is then going to trickle down into your workouts and you're just not going to be giving it, you know, all you got. So, um, yeah, it's really dialing in as far as the head space of each client, just because I, I, that's where it all starts. When you were, were I guess, before you launched um, Time to Shine, what made you say, ha, this is what I'm going to do? Like, why did you do that? Yeah. So I have actually always had a desire to train. And when I was in the gym and I've seen, you know, personal trainers, the biggest thing that would frustrate me aside from them not like perfecting somebody's form and potentially causing injury, <laughs> the other side of it was, it was just like, do you even care about this client? Cause you're just mm -hmm. there on your phone. You're not really in tune with them. And gotcha. I'm thinking they're spending how much money to come in and, you know, if they don't show up, they don't show up. You check on them. And, you know, from doing a in-person trainers, for what I've known, they don't typically do that. They don't, they're not that connected. Mm -hmm. And the more I learned about online training, I realized that the, the thing that the biggest driving factor as to why it's becoming so successful is because it is more than the training. It's, 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 the, it's like a mindset coach, mm -hmm. essentially. And so I've always, you know, my friends, so I'm, part Filipino and my friends have always called me Dr. Phil <laughs> because I'm, always, <laughs> I'm like the guy that people like they, they feel like they can talk to and I'm like okay so I've had my own journey I've you know lost 50 
plus pounds at one time. Um, so I had to teach all myself, myself how to, you know, the workouts and everything, build my own routines. But then also there's this, the part of just being like able to talk through problems with somebody. And I've always loved doing that. So this kind of like encompasses it all at one and basically my dream job of what I always wanted to do. So. so that's awesome. Not a lot of people can yeah. say that. Yeah. Yeah. It's neat. It feels good. Yeah. So when you do, <clears throat> so for, for time to shine, what is the concept of the name? Why is it called time to shine? So I came up with the name. So a funny story is it actually, that name, I started with a different business when I was doing, I was car detailing. I did detailing cars on the, on the side out of my house a couple of years ago. And then when this came into play, I was sitting there thinking, I want a name that just kind of speaks to me and, and my passion and what I'm doing for people. And, you know, time to shine. It's just that I had to find my time to shine. I had to find my light. I had yeah. to do everything I could to really flourish as a human being. Um, and I think that it was, it took a lot of courage for me to get to this point. And my whole reason is for people to be able to see that they can do it too. Mm. And that's why I say, I want, I want people to find their light and then, you know, be the light and spread the light, you know? So when you learn something, spread it, because that's how we learn. If we share our stories, we, we, you know, we're all in it together in some way or another, you know, fitness journey, we all have the same goals. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I want everybody's light to be now and I want everybody's time to shine. So kind of, kind of cheesy, but also like, no, it's great. <laughs> yeah, you're like a whole entrepreneur. You got car detailing and then, yeah. like, 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 okay. Right. You do DIY stuff too. Uh, I let's, let's, I'm listen. like a little jack of all trades. I mean, write it down. Like, all right. <laughs> What um, again? When 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 I opened, I was talking about how people perceive online aesthetics. Really, you know what people attain to based on the standard that they really set and say this is um, this is the standard that I think is going to be attractive. This is the standard that I think you know is what people should look like as a trainer. Um, what do you see as far as either positive or negative when it comes to viewing um, online spaces and online pictures and images as some sort of standard um, for people? Um, so I think it definitely depends on like the platforms that people are following, you know, and uh, it is very common for us to go and see all these people online, you know, their models and whatnot and all these shirtless selfies and stuff. And it's just like, it, I think, that that can be detrimental to people's state of mind because what happens is that they're looking on, they're comparing themselves. That's what we naturally do. We compare ourselves to everything around us. And so, um, and so part of my morning routine is I don't look at social media. I don't Ugh. look at it. I don't look at it. You know, if the I whole world, the whole world, like that's it. the whole world just gasped. Like, <gasps> yeah. <laughs> right. Like online trainer. No, but like, it's so important though, because you know, even in, in starting this business, it was the fact that like, if I go online and I see these other trainers and then I see how successful they are, well, then what's that going to do for me? It's either going to want to encourage me to like, you got to try harder or two, what naturally is going to happen. I'm like, I'll never be that. I'm never going to be good enough for that. You know, I, you know, it, it's just, it really does. I think social media, it can be used for good and bad. And yeah. I think that, um, you know, I do love a lot of the companies these days. They're they're pushing the brand that's like, you know, be yourself, be your authentic self. Because for the longest time, it's just been this. If you're not, you know, a Kenner or Barbie doll, it's like, who are you? And that's that's that was such this facade, you know, and and that's not that's not real life. You you just mentioned something that had me thinking. I was having a conversation with um, somebody else, and a lot of the conversation when it comes to um, standards and expectations and the pressure, a lot of times people always assign that to females when they're looking online. And it seems as though that conversation is not mirrored when we talk about men and the pressure to be built, to be fit, to be all of these things. Do you find when, you know, being in that space, do you find the same pressure, uh, there to be the same pressure for both men and for women? 
Um, you mean as far as just being like fit and what and fitting a yeah a category, I guess, in a sense. Yeah. Um, I would say in the gay community, there is. I think okay. a lot of people feel pressured to to feel you know they you know that they need to be like a certain you know a ten. What some people would say, you know, I think that there's there me coming into the community, there was that like, oh my god, nobody's gonna like me if I'm not in shape or nobody's you know. I I think oh. that's something that and and with my mental health, like, like that's something I try to stay in tune with is to like not to feed off of the pressure because I think there's some things that just come naturally. And yeah, I, I do think that um, as we move forward in time, I think that men are probably held to the same expectations from a self point of view. So sure. um, the feelings that we see and from looking at social media and just kind of living in today's world. Yeah, one of the things that I really enjoy about your platform and the way that you address your platform <clears throat> is that you do bring the element of awareness and balance. You know, so we're, you're going through the routine. Um, if you if you don't <clears throat> follow him on social media, uh, just make sure that you do because it's balanced. Um, but you go through the routine. Um, you talk about what what's going on, but then you also talk about inspirational things, motivational things, you know, like you said uh, before, you know, taking time for you in the morning. So it's not just all about, you know, what's going on outside, because that's important to a lot of people, most people, it's important, yeah. but yeah. also addressing the why of it and what, how are we maintaining inside? Right. Yeah. That's, um, I think, and, and that's kind of speaks to my journey in itself, was that, was learning the impacts of staying strict to a routine it yeah. was more than just the physical appearance it was everything that i gained internally it was the confidence it was it's it's all the things that allow me to to kind of just stay strong throughout whatever i'm faced with in life um because i showed myself that i can do anything i set my heart to right so yeah that's why i do speak to mindset a lot i, I open up about who i am a lot of, um on my my post and whatnot because yeah. you know yeah i'm certified so yeah I, I know how to build you a workout i know how to you know calculate your macros and give you a meal plan and, and adjust them and whatnot but also i truly understand what it feels like to struggle and i think that's the that's what you don't see you know on a lot of fitness trainers pages that are you know they've been out for a long time they're bigger and so they're successful when they just post a workout but for me it's like i want to actually truly connect with people who are following me and I want them to to gain insight and, and be encouraged to to just grow. Yeah. And so that's what I hope that that's the message I hope people receive when they do come to my page. So when somebody does come to your page and somebody does want to, you know, I guess start the process or inquire about the process, do you have different, I guess, levels? Do you is it time based? Is it performance based? How is your program set up? Uh, so my program that I have, that's, it's kind of basic. It's 12 weeks. Um, okay. and then after that it goes, so it's three months and then it turns into a month to month. Um, but really 12 weeks is enough time for somebody to, to, to be consistent for, and it's long enough for me to be able to push them to keep past those potential plateaus to say, okay, look at how far you've come. Um, so it starts with 12 weeks, but then a lot of times it's, it continues afterwards because there is a lot to be gained from it. Yeah. Um, and it's just kind of having like an accountability partner with you every single day. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, that's awesome. I have a, I have an app. It's not, I'm not a very good accountability partner for my app. <laughs> <laughs> Cause it tells me what to do. And I'm just like, maybe later. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that was such a great idea. <laughs> great suggestion. <laughs> so I think that, so I think there is something to be said about, you know, a program that actually has a person that's motivating you, that's encouraging you, that you do have that accountability, that you have all of those things. Um, oh, I, think, yeah. I think that type of connection, just in general, but specifically here, um, setting out on a journey that is new. You know, a lot of times when yeah. people set out on a journey, um, I would imagine that this is like the first time that they're like, okay, I'm going to try this. Or there's some reason why there was a lapse in their um the words not care but their routine um, yeah yeah so. and that's where uh, it's kind of like a deep dive before i do you know sign on a client because here's the thing we all have our little our niche that we work with right and so 
just because I'm a trainer, it doesn't mean I'm going to train every single person. It's got to be across both. Mm. And uh, so it's really, truly dialing in. So it's like, are you actually truly ready? You know, are you committed? Uh, because I'm going to lay this out. I'm going to put all the groundwork out there for you. And, you know, if you see you miss a workout, I'm going to tell you. And I do weekly check-ins. I send out a form that asks how they're feeling. What goals did you have last week? Did you accomplish them? If not, then why? Um, so it's okay. truly like staying up to like up to speed week to week, yeah. um, day in and day out, because it's it's that's where we build that consistency, right? So, yeah, it's uh, and I think that's what I love about it is that it isn't just like here I gave you a program, there you go, have fun. It's like hey, I gave you a program, so let's let's go do it. Come on, I my app. <laughs> up with your app, yeah. See, <laughs> and see, and I and I use an app, and then my, my app tells me if you missed a workout, you didn't track your meals, you didn't take your progress picture, so I'm gonna be like, why didn't you do this? <laughs> Not the app telling on you. Wait a minute. Yeah. It <laughs> <laughs> so you um that's so funny i know i feel so seen and, and reviewed yeah, right. right now <laughs> give me a call you got it. <laughs> so you, you have um you have come through a lot in your own personal journey um your uh, physical journey as well you know shedding 50 pounds and getting to the place where you're confident enough to even share your process and share everything that you learned, even being a certified certified coach. To somebody that's listening now through your journey, what has been the most beneficial um, result of your decision to invest in yourself when it comes to your health? I would say, um, you know, I never really thought of myself as being someone who was resilient until I had friends tell me that I was resilient after mm -hmm. things that I've faced in my struggles is that I don't allow whatever's happening to me or like if somebody's been cold to me to turn me cold. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that me sticking with this, you know, throughout jobs, throughout everything that's changed, this is the one constant that I've, I've maintained. And because of that, it's the thing that keeps me grounded. Mm -hmm. Um, it, and it really does, like I said, when I mentioned it being part of my routine in the mornings and it, it, it sets me up for the day ahead. Um, it's kind of like this bulletproof mindset that, mm -hmm. that I've, I've gained from it. It's the fact that nothing's going to stop me. And also you can put me down. You can hate on my content that I post on social media or anything, but no matter what, it's that I'm doing my best to put good out into the world and mm. I I am who I am because I stuck to what I intended to do and my goals as far as getting in better shape and living a healthier lifestyle um, so yeah I would say that for me the biggest thing was just uh, it's that that resilient mindset and it's just yeah. truly you know staying true to who I am and not needing to fit a certain mold it's my own mold that I created wow so. it's your own mold that you created that's great yeah yeah you don't have to fit in if you create the space. What? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. I love that. <laughs> well, True. John, thank you, thank you, thank you for um, for being here and sharing your uh, transparent journey um, and even the inspiration of how getting from one place to the next has really improved your life and is now improving the lives of so many more people. That's the goal. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. At first, it might be about the weight loss and looking better in the mirror. The problem is that you give up when you plateau or when you don't see the results happening overnight. You give up just before realizing that your consistency will reward you with more than you could ever imagine. Consistency builds confidence, more energy, and a resilient mindset that tells you you are capable of achieving anything. You're not just changing your body, you're changing your whole life. You're stressed? Work out. Sad? Work out. Anxious? Work out. You choose to take care of yourself, especially during the hardest moments in your life, it'll flip the switch that causes you to tear off that rear view mirror. No matter what, just keep going. Don't